We're in the second part of the lesson, 6.4b, solving two-step equations. We can use inverse operations to solve equations that contain more than one operation. So remember, an operation is just addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. The process of solving two-step equations involves applying inverse operations in the opposite order than is normally used to simplify an expression. We have 2n plus 4 is equal to 14. For this equation, we begin by undoing the addition with subtraction minus 4. Then we undo the multiplication with division divided by 2. A baker added more brownies to a box, doubling the original number of brownies but then found he couldn't close the lid because there were too many in the box. So the baker removed six brownies to reach the final number of brownies in the box of 12. Write and solve an equation to find the original number of brownies in the box. So we're going to let b equal the original number of brownies. We know the original number was doubled, so that's 2b. 2 times whatever the original number was. Six brownies were removed, so we have a minus six. And the final number in the box was 12, so we have equals 12. Our equation is 2b minus six is equal to 12. Now we solve for the value of b by using inverse operations that will isolate b to one side of the equation, one side of the equal sign. We have 2b minus six is equal to 12. We can use an inverse property of addition by doing plus 6 on both sides of the equal sign. Since the equation contains subtraction as minus 6, we add 6 to both sides. Now we have 2b is equal to 18. This minus 6 plus 6 created it 0 pairs, and it eliminated it. We just have 2b is equal to 18. That's the identity property. Minus 6 plus 6 is equal to 0. The inverse property of multiplication is used because 2b means 2 multiplied by an unknown quantity b. We divide both sides. That's the inverse of multiplication is division. So we divide both sides by this coefficient 2, and we get 2 over 2. It's the same numerator and denominator, so that's actually a 1, isn't it? We have 1b is equal to to 9, because 18 divided by 2 is equal to 9. We've isolated b to one side of the equation. We know the original number of brownies in the box was 9. So there were 9 brownies in the box. He doubled it, had 18, then couldn't close the lid. So he took 6 back out, then he could close the lid. Then there were 12 brownies in the box. We can also find the original number of brownies in the box by working backwards. We start with the final number of brownies and add 6. Then we would divide the result by 2. So if you've watched my channel for a while, you know I always say there can be more than one way to solve a problem, but one way is usually easier than another. So this would be using arithmetic. We would start with the final number in the box, which is 12. He took out 6, so we would add 6. See, we're working backwards. We're working backwards. We're starting with the original number of 12. And since he took out 6, we add 6. And we undo the doubling of the brownies by dividing by 2. So we would have 12 plus 6 divided by 2 is equal to the original number of brownies. We can also write it as... 12 plus 6 over 2, because this represents division, doesn't it? We first do the numerator, so we would have 18 divided by 2, and then 18 divided by 2 is 9. We know the original number of brownies is 9. So 12 plus 6 divided by 2 is equal to b, therefore 18 divided by 2 is equal to b, because that's what this is, and Therefore, 9 is equal to b, because 18 divided by 2 equals b is 9 equals b. So if you ever see an arrow pointing to the right like this, it means therefore. It's a math symbol, which means therefore. 
we have this, therefore we have this, therefore we have this. And you'll see this a lot as you get older and get into higher levels of math. So the problem can be solved using algebra, using inverse operations, or using arithmetic by working backwards. We created a zero pair with minus six plus six and eliminated it, added six to this side, and got an 18, which is starting to isolate our variable to one side. We divided both sides by the coefficient two and got one B is equal to nine. And over here, we worked backwards. We started with the 12, and instead of subtracting 6, we added 6, and then divided by 2, and that got us 18 divided by 2, which equals 9, and 9 equals 9. So we also could have solved this by using algebra tiles, right? So there's more than one way to solve a problem, but one way is usually easier than another. We can change a light bulb by climbing a ladder and putting the bulb in. We can also stand on top of a chair. There's different ways to solve problems. Here's another problem. It says the Smith family have twins and another child that is eight years old. And the sum of the ages of their children is 14 years. So how old are the twins? So remember, twins means two. So we're gonna let A equal the twins' age so if we have twins and we're trying to find their age, that's two times the age of the twins plus the eight years of their other child is going to equal 14 years. We start by doing an inverse operation. We want to isolate A to one side. So if we have a plus eight, we do minus eight to both sides of the equation, both sides of the equal sign. That's going to eliminate this plus eight plus eight minus eight is a zero. So technically we're saying two A plus zero, but identity property, two A is still gonna be two A on this side if we add zero or we don't. So we don't need to even write it. So we've got two A is equal to six because 14 minus eight is six. We divide both sides by this coefficient two. We do the same thing on each side and we have the same numerator and denominator, so that's technically a one, isn't it? We have one A, we don't have to write the one, and six divided by two is three. We know the age of each twin is three years old. Now we can check, make sure we did it correctly, by inserting three for A into our equation. Two times three plus eight is equal to 14. That would be six plus eight is equal to 14, yes. That makes sense, it makes the equation true. We know three is the solution to the problem, to the equation. To find the solution to a two-step equation, we perform the same inverse operations on both sides of the equal sign. This keeps the equation balanced. We perform inverse operations until the variable is isolated. If we have a scale, a balanced scale, and we've got 2a plus 8 on this side, and it's equal to 14 on this side, we can figure out what the value of a is by taking away 8 from this side, and taking away 8 from this side, which would make this a 6. Now we know that 2a is equal to 6. And if two a's are equal to 6, well then 1a must be equal to 3. So we've finished the second part of the lesson. We're going to move on to the third part. And we're going to talk about two-step equations with negative numbers. So to find the value of the variable, just keep doing the inverse operations to both sides of the equal sign until that variable is isolated. Have a wonderful day, and please join me for the third part of the lesson. Bye.